There are a few differences between the normal mode and the challenge mode of the Aetherblade My Trend Strike mission. First of all, the green circle mechanic requires at least three players to stack in it to prevent a party wipe, but no more than three should stack in it because they'll gain a debuff, which lasts longer than the entire encounter, and if they go in the green circle a second time, when they have that debuff, they'll die. And you'll get essentially three of these throughout the fight, so you can do so without killing anyone and having them to sacrifice your party, so long as you're quick through these Scarlet Phantom phases, because they'll do a second one if you take long enough. So you want a lot of CC and DPS to be able to make it through that without having to get more of the debuff than is necessary. The second thing is that the orbital strikes will now appear on two players at a time, which reduces the amount of space you have a little bit, but it's not that important. You can stack these together, but it's really not necessary and it's sort of a risk to do so. So I prefer to just keep them on the outside and then just put them near each other. The next thing that's really different is the laser phase. Instead of there being a static position every single time, there's going to be three ferrous bombs and your party will need to decide which one they'll use as a safe spot. And then two players will randomly gain a special action key and they'll also have lasers coming out from them at diagonals. They need to place down these lasers at the other two ferrous bombs by using their special action key. And they need to make sure that the laser doesn't overlap. So they'll go over to it and decide if it's overlapping or not. And if it does, then they need to swap with the other special action key player, use their special action key, then regroup with the rest of the party at the safe spot and then continue. That's pretty much the fight other than having a little bit more pressure from all of the mechanics due to the exposed debuff, which my Trin and Scarlet's Shockwave will give you. Essentially, you don't want to be tanking mechanics because it'll compound on each other. And also, the Shockwave will instantly kill you if you're at the epicenter. So you want to make sure you're not right on top of that. So let's show how I handle these mechanics as a heal brand. My job is mostly to give out quickness to my party and Aegis, which will allow them to block the shock waves or other attacks that could give them more exposed debuff and generally keep my team alive. So I have access to a lot of projectile reflex as well with the Tome F3, which will prevent a lot of damage during the Scarlet phase. And I have Sanctuary because CC is really important in this encounter because there is a huge defiance bar and getting through that quickly is important because the mechanics will be reliant on your DPS or how fast you get through them later on. So this first phantom phase is not really important because there's just two small ones, but those small ones can pressure you later on. So you want to focus killing them first. My trend doesn't really do too much at the start here because it's pretty much normal mode. She can put exposed on you, but not really too important. Now the second Scarlet Phantom appears here. We want to spread out for the orange circles so we don't kill each other. And then while we're spread out, we want to be killing the small phantoms because those can add a lot of pressure, as I said. And then we regroup on the CC Phantom and prepare for the green circle. It spawns, they move off to the side and three people get inside. Now those three people have the debuff, so they don't want to do that ever again or they'll die unless you know they have to to prevent a wipe. And then after the green circle, the DPS can go over and finish off the DPS phantom. But since we did enough CC, we got the green circle and we finished CCing at the same time. So we all move over together, which is really nice because we're all giving each other boons and no one's singled out by themselves and potentially dying. So once we get to 10%, Scarlet is going to come out and a lot of pressure is going to be increased during that time. Right now, I'm just kind of focusing on DPS, but now is when potentially my, my party members can go down. So I want to be protecting them with the reflect bubbles whenever the, the F3 tome is off cooldown and giving them Aegis. And you can see the whirl attack here is really important to dodge backwards because you don't take multiple hits then. And there's the shockwave. You can see there's an orange circle on the shockwaves 
If you're standing in the epicenter there, you'll instantly die. But if you jump over the effect that comes out, then you'll avoid the exposed debuff. Now here's some more whirl attacks. I'm pretty healthy here, but I'm going to try to give out heals to my team anyways. There's another shockwave. We're just going to jump over this. Even though I've given out Aegis to my party members, they can still probably want to dodge it because they don't want to waste the Aegis. Now the Scarlet Phantom phase is coming out again. I use my Sanctuary to get the CC, but then I back off so that we can spread out. My party members that do more damage than me will probably be killing the smaller phantoms and then everyone else will regroup on the the CC phantom here and then the green circle has spawned so I'm going to go in this time because I haven't the first time and now I've got the debuff so I shouldn't do that ever again and we're going to do the CC there's another scarlet a smaller phantom is still alive but we take that out as well and now we go over to the DPS phantom and we finish that off together giving out boons to each other staying safe and Meanwhile, there are shockwaves going off, so you want to keep jumping and you don't want to stay close to Scarlet in general because you'll just take extra pressure. So stay on the edges if you can. I sometimes like to go in the middle as the heal brand because I can take the most pressure and that means that there's more space for them to spread out and they don't have to take the damage of being that close. So as like the tankier support player, you want to stand in the more dangerous spot so that others don't have to. And you can see now the orbital strikes are out. They place both of them on top of each other, which is not really necessary to do so because there's only going to really be four of those out at a time. Mostly you just want to make sure they're on the edge of the arena because then you've got a lot of space. So usually put them behind your group and then you can just rotate away from them so that you have space because there, there is plenty of space. Now when the shockwave is there like that, you do want to be a little bit careful that you don't dodge into the orbital strike area but it's still there's plenty of space so now here's the laser phase the ferris bombs are essentially potential safe spots two players will get special action keys and they have to make sure that they don't overlap with the safe spot that we've decided to go to they use the special action keys there and then they return to the group and we just stay right there because the safe spot will apparently work so we survived that and that's pretty much the entire encounter because you just repeat that. But at this point, there's only four minutes left in the encounter. So it is a DPS race. And if you're losing players over time, then you're going to fail because you're going to not only get more pressured by having less players, but yeah, the enrage timer is going to creep up on you. And also the phantom phase, which is also the other important part needs to be done quickly or you have to get more of the debuff from the green circle and now we're on the third set of the green circle so this is when if we have to do another set this is when people are going to have to sacrifice themselves so it's really important that you don't lose people before that point or you know you've only got one person that you can really lose because you've got to have nine people get the debuff and if you have to get a fourth set of the green circle then that's 12 and that's more than you have of players so at least two people have to die then i go into the middle here during the orange circle part because we all have to spread out and i actually use my elite skill there to make sure i top everyone off because that's actually the most dangerous part of this encounter because if i can heal my allies i can prevent them from dying but when i'm split from them i can't ensure that they survive so i use the longest range heal that i've got which is my elite skill and that keeps everyone alive long enough for me to regroup with them we do the last green circle which i don't go in because i've already got the debuff and now we can pretty much just finish this there's going to be one more ferris bomb laser phase after this and as long as we get the coordination on that should be a win so we're going to go in just be careful though because we don't want to stay in melee range here we want to stay at maximum melee because a lot of the exposed debuff can start stacking up at this point because players start to get hit by more shockwaves because of so much stuff going on and they're going to take more damage from all the stuff. So we put the orbital strikes off to the side. The shockwave happens. We dodge that. And now at this point, 
we don't need CC anymore because we've done the last uh, phantom phase, which means I can use my sanctuary to play very safe here. We go for a res here very quickly. Really important that you res that because we need everyone we can. And yeah, I can put my sanctuary down to block the projectiles there, but I have my tome up, so I don't need to waste it yet. I'm giving out the sustain here and at 20% is where the ferris bomb is going to appear here. So I didn't get the special action key at all this um, attempt, but you can see that there are two players that do have the bombs. They go out and you can see they're in the wrong spot. So they swap places and then we return back to the safe spot and now we're good to go. We just stay here and just DPS at this point. We've got a minute and 30 seconds left. So just don't die and do damage. So here I'm going in using a lot of my skills to be as defensive as possible. There's the sanctuary going down and just gonna do damage. Dodging the shock waves though, at this point, there's not really much that can kill us other than just standing in a shock wave there. And yeah, we want to dodge out of this. The Yeah, the orbital strikes, that could kill us definitely. So I want to put those out. I'm using my shield five to block the projectiles there. And I'm going to use everything as aggressively as possible. Use my last reflect there. And I could use my elite here to be even safer. But at this point, we're going to get the kill. So if you like this content, then like the video, subscribe for more, and I will see you all next time.